The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made us in your image and call us to share in the renewal of this world. Inspire us to seek and serve Christ in all persons, that the proclamation of your good news in our worship, in our words, and in our work may lead us into the fullness of your love through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace and welcome to you all. A word about what's before us. Uh, we have four individuals who will speak. Uh, the, most, the, the, the lengthy of, the, of those will be devoted to the time that Bergen Dossett will bring us with an update from our Campus Concerns Committee. But we're going to hear briefly from me with an overview of the strategic planning work and mission planning work that got us uh, to this point. Uh, we'll have a brief uh, overview from Ellen Wright about uh, other previous master planning work that has preceded the work that's been done in the last several years. We then have the uh, substantive, uh, about 15, 20 minutes with Bergen, uh, and then uh, a word from Caroline Rossini, the current junior warden, about what the vestry's been processing from your responses since January. And finally, a word from Tyler Yarbrough, the current chair of the implementation committee, who will talk to us some about next steps. The very first thing I'd like to do, though, is, is ask if you are a member of the implementation committee, would you stand? Just in place where you are. And if you're a member of the implementation committee, so you see people that you can speak to afterwards, please be seated. If you're a member of the campus concerns committee, please stand. Wonderful. So again, you can see some of the faces that you might speak to in, in water cooler or follow-up conversation. Uh, please be seated. So the, the work uh, that we're about today is in part about providing some of the, um, let's say, between the lines information or the implied, the inferred information that wasn't named explicitly uh, in January, sort of what was behind some of the rationale with respect to this footprint or that footprint of planned buildings. It's also meant to be a time when the committee reports back to you what it believes it heard from the congregation that day and then subsequently by responses to surveys and then finally to report newly what happens next for, for us with respect to cap capital improvement to our campus. This is work that started uh, in 2011 with the task of simply rethinking our mission statement. Our mission statement as it pertained to the congregation in its evolving Zitz im Leben, its evolving place for life, what was happening downtown and with new staff that was coming in. You see this printed in our annual reports each time, but it took about 18 months for a vestry to work through to this and come through to a, a definition of what we would be about and a statement through which all of our missions would be placed. These core values were also added, and you find them greeting you on the screen each day when you walk in our hall our hallways here, that we're called to be disciples, evangelists, servants, stewards, and friends. And having come up with those core values in our life, we then set about the task as a parish of putting together a mission structure that distilled our, at that time, 92 committees into eight commissions very focused on this work, the work of our core values and the work of our mission. So again, those 92 committees were then distilled into a commission on liturgy, a commission on faith and action or outreach, a commission on administration, a commission on evangelism, a commission on cathedral life, a commission on parish life, and then pastoral care. Once established, those commissions became core places, the core place of discussion about what would be our strategic plan. What each of those commissions were tasked with the responsibility of coming to listening sessions, there were seven of them that were called throughout the parish in the evening, on Sunday mornings, where everyone in the parish was invited to come and dream if cost were no object, if volunteer strength were no object, if imagination were no limitation, what would we do? And out of those dreaming sessions came several 
core important commitments. We wanted to build and enhance the work of welcome and hospitality. For some, that was expressed in just wanting doors that were open more or a campus that was open more. For others, it was expressed in the desire for deeper ties of fellowship with an evolving and changing and a portion of our congregation becoming by definition more transient. We wanted to get to know one another better. We wanted to do more to overtly support our faith and action ministries, our outreach ministries, and our work of pastoral care. And we wanted to put front and center the growth and nurture of our ministry to and with teenagers. So once the strategic plan was created, it was presented at the 2017 annual parish meeting, and it still is out in the pews now and at our pew rack in the form that you see there on the screen in that, in that brochure. Uh, once that was out there and the commitment was made to those principles, we formed an implementation committee that was going to look at program and staff implications, the financial implications of doing this well, the campus implications, and finally, we would look at, after those three, what would be most needful now. And we've set up now for our campus concerns piece. We've spoken about program before. We've spoken some about the financial implications. But this past annual parish meeting, we had a presentation from the campus concerns group that looked at the capital improvement questions. And the belief was expressed that the following was most needful. A fellowship hall with space and formality that allowed for a continuity of experience between the work of worship and the work of fellowship. That was one commitment. The next was space for youth ministry that was provided for on this footprint on the corner of 9th and Broadway in the center of our campus. That had a twofold purpose. The first was to move us out of the building next door. We rent space next door. It was thought by definition simply renting space for them marginalized them they have to make, parents have to make a special effort to go there. Teens have to make a special effort to get here. But it also exposed the vestry and others to the vicissitudes of the downtown rental market. Uh, and to bring that ministry onto this campus became a commitment of the strategic plan. So fellowship space with continuity of experience between worship and fellowship, youth space that brought them onto this campus, and then finally, a staging area for faith in action or outreach ministries built to suit and not simply adapted from space otherwise designed. So any outreach we do on our campus now is done in space that's adapted for the moment, not often built for the purpose of doing that outreach. These were the commitments that were expressed this past January, along with a presentation about possible footprints. I think this is the point. There will be a time for question and answers after Ellen and Bergen has, have uh, spoken. But to get this information out there and before you quickly, I'd ask Ellen to the microphone for uh, what's preceded this in terms of master plan work by Good morning. Good morning. Is this working? Yeah, yes it is. Uh, this may look to be a uh, sermon topic, uh, but, but it's, actually, um, it's actually something that, uh, as, as the long and tooth member of this committee, uh, gets to review. In brief, uh, I think... This photograph, perhaps that one, show that in the 1950s there was no parking at this church. There were buildings cheek by jowl uh, on parking lot A. It's just a reminder uh, of where we've come. In the 1980s, as far back as I'm going to choose to look, there were, um, there were master plan initiatives that resulted in uh, a ramp extending into the back door, well, the main door on the weekdays and the Broadway entrance from parking lot A. There were liturgical renovations. The, this lovely room was renovated in the 1980s, as was the Wheeler Room, and there was administration space renovation. In the 1990s, 
uh, there, were, there was a master plan committee in 1998. It was followed by the design and build committee in 2001. Uh, the joint efforts, or not, well, the consecutive efforts of those committees into the early 2000s resulted in the organ being moved into a rebuilt balcony space, redo of some of the main floor space of the church, excluding the nave, uh, purchase of the what is now known as the annex, which was uh, at that time a bank, renovation of our stained glass windows, repair of our exterior stonework, redo of the annex after we bought it. We bought and demolished the building that sat on parking lot C, which is across the street, known as the Hathcock Building. We redid the exterior lighting of the church. We installed the landscaping that we all enjoy on a, a daily basis, and the cabinetry was built into the wheeler room. What was known as the cattle chute, and may still be, was widened, uh, and uh, the, what had formerly housed the organ was reconstituted as what is now the sacristy. The clergy vesting area was also redone. So we've accomplished a lot uh, in the past couple of decades, and for those of you who are new to the church, you may not know how far we've come in that time. Uh, enter 2003, when the Future Space Committee was established. Is there anyone here who was part of that committee? Bob Smith, I'm looking at you. Were you part of that committee? Who's David, were you part of that committee? David Fox, stand up. <laughs> Show your age. <laughs> uh, the Future Space Committee, in the course of one summer, produced a remarkable document uh, that's a cogent 11-page synopsis of their work. Uh, and I will only say that they gave due credit to the previous committees from 1998 and 2001 as having laid the groundwork. That included, interestingly, since uh, you're going to hear where we are today, several floor plan designs for a new building on parking lot A, right out here on Broadway, uh, each of which encompassed, to varying degrees, a green space between the new building and the current building. They all involve tearing down the annex in order to preserve as much parking as possible. And they all involved constructing an entrance to the no on the north side of the church, which is this side, in order to allow direct access from what is now parking lot B and the annex area into the church on Sunday mornings. This report was complete with phasing ideas, financing ideas, um, including leasing parking lot space after we tore down the Hathcock building. It was not yet demolished at that time. It's a wonderful document, and uh, the projected costs of what they wanted to do are remarkably similar to the projected costs of what we're thinking about doing in 2003. So are the projected square footage needs, and so are the design ideas. In 2004, there was yet another master plan committee convened that engaged in a year-plus long search nationwide for a design architect. Uh, after that year, in which we entertained 30-plus responses to our request for proposals, we interviewed five firms from New York, Chicago, Philadelphia, and one from Nashville. We hired a firm from Chicago uh, that over the ensuing year to 18 months uh, gave us uh, a plan. As, as you all probably remember, the perfect storm of diocesan parish 
and economic events in, uh, rapidly ensued, and so that plan got shelved. And now I will turn this over to Bergen. Thanks, Ellen. Full disclosure, I'm not, this makes me a little nervous. Not that I'm not convicted about what I'm presenting, but I'm just not always comfortable doing this. So I've asked my cousin to lightly applaud at different points. <laughs> I, hope, I hope that doesn't bother you, but keep doing it, Susie. Thank you. So here we go. Um, the road to 2018 master plan. So, <laughs> good. <laughs> All right, that helps. That's good. Yeah. In 2016, there was something called the Dream Sessions. So it was a precursor to the strategic plan that kind of informed how we were going to program this whole master plan and phases and how we're going to get our minds around it. And, and I'm told, and I don't remember this specifically, but the subject was if money were no object, right? So, and so there were a whole series of things over a lot of weeks where parishioners got in and kind of stated their preferences. If, as we used to say at Disney, in a blue sky session, if you could imagine anything you would want at Christ Church Cathedral, obviously that would accommodate, could be accommodated on the site, what would it be? And so from there, uh, we distilled down based on sessions with parishioners and staff and within kind of cost constraints, a definitive program. And that's what informed what we did on the uh, Campus Concerns Committee later. The convening of the Implementation uh, Committee then started in 2017, as, as Timothy referenced. So... This is on the website at Christ Church Cathedral, so anybody can go and look at it, but this kind of reminds us and informs us of what we're doing. We commissioned an assessment of the state of the campus, and that's been done, and we'll talk about that later. Um, new, more flexible gathering space to accommodate large and small groups, as Timothy referenced, more in specific in the fellowship hall. A new kitchen. These are specific ideas for those in need of food and shelter, as well as parish-wide social gatherings. Space to accommodate temporary housing and basically expanding or implementing better our faith in action outreach ministries. Clearly, education space, again, earlier referenced about the 18 building, A10 building, consolidating every, everybody here on this campus. And then parking, which is always a point of discussion that's available, adequate, and secure. Our committee then went back, with a lot of help from Ellen, and went looked at archival research, including the 2006 plan that she referenced, existing and as-built plans, a lot of interface with the property committee, Ken Sheasley's committee, on past building reports, and then prior geological and property surveys. Um, informing all this, again, in the parish update back in 2017 and then in 18, the question was asked, what will 9th and Broadway district look like in 10 years? What's going around around us? So as you guys know, the Lifeway campus is well underway. Um, the Gannett, the Tennessee uh, campus has been sold. So there's a lot going on happening. Um, we made the choice based on institutional knowledge and the successful uh, partnership that we'd had with HBRA, the Chicago architect, to redeploy them last year to create some ideas for the master plan. As Ellen referenced, they clearly had the knowledge. They had been working for, with us for 18 months back in 2006, and uh, they could hit the ground running. Um, HPRA is an interesting company. I don't know if you guys know this. Hammond, BB, uh, Rupert, and Ainge um, founded uh, I think Hammond was the dean of the School of Architecture at Yale for a time. They have done some very significant sacred space buildings throughout the country. And so they were, they were clearly a strong addition for what we were trying to do. 
Um, after the master plan was developed and we zeroed in on a scheme that we presented in January of this year, um, we worked with Cindy Anderson at Hoare Construction to develop the cost estimating. And all that was presented as part of the parish update in January. Um, finally, the detailed assessment of the existing facility by the company ISIS. That's literally the name of it, unfortunately. <laughs> ISES was executed and published in February of 17. So the, this report, just with a cover sheet on the slide, is, uh, includes recurring and non-recurring costs a deep dive into all the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems of the, of the cathedral, life cycle component cost, meaning if you're gonna look at the life cycle of an air handling unit on the roof of this building, how many more years will it realistically last, and what will the cost be to replace it? Um, sustainability and energy assessment. So in essence, we have a roadmap to figure out where our liabilities are and what our costs to forecast are in the future. The existing facility, and you all know this well, um, parking lot A is to the west, it's labeled as such. Parking lot B to the north, northwest of the site, the annex, obviously the nave. Parking lot C, which we counted, I think is about 73 spaces and parking lot D, which has about 10 spaces, actually. 2006 master plan, I'll just hit on this briefly, um, included a significant garden. If you look at where the letter A is in that plan, there was proposed a formal garden at Broadway, likely that would have been fenced in a little bit just for the realities of an urban campus. Um, parcel A West expansion, a structure over the alley, a fellowship hall that was about 2,000 square feet, um, and then included the demolition of the, of the annex. Coming back to recent events, we looked at a scheme with HBRA to incorporate the annex and build a bridge. And that would include a full renovation and bringing up the code of the annex building, some kind of umbilical cord or, or sky bridge, roughly from uh, just west of this, this room to tie back into this and still building to meet our program needs on parking lot A as well. Seven D figure ground. And figure ground is kind of an architectural reference to literally a footprint or the massing of an idea or a scheme. This was the, the scheme that was presented in January. And we got a lot of feedback, some positive, some not so positive. But that included, obviously, the demolition of the annex building, a courtyard main entry on Broadway. So you see where the letter A is. There was an area between the nave and the new structure. It was kind of a garden and approach going into that. Um, the west wing with an 18-foot setback from Broadway. So the dimension, if you take the nave, which is basically right on the sidewalk, the new structure was only about 18 feet back. Uh, fellowship Hall of about 4,000 feet. New construction roughly about 14,005 and renovation of about 24,600. Accessible entry from the north, elevator and stair core. So where the annex was in parking lot B, <clears throat> because the topo slips down, the idea is that is anybody who was disabled can enter at grade and then come up to the church through an elevator lobby in that area. And then 11 feet off the property line. And the intent there, based on feedback, was creating some kind of light well that would, even if, they were, if there were construction in the future, because downtown code allows for building right on the property line, that uh, we would have some kind of ventilation and light well there. Figure eight, figure ground, and this is post, post the January meeting, continuing to work with HBRA. We heard a lot of the concerns, and this is certainly a work in progress, but uh, incorporating more of the light and air, accommodating more of an oblique angle, so as you approach from the west, so if you're coming up from McDonald's or the Frist, and you look at the cathedral, there's a new setback there, which is much more substantial. 
So you see much more of the original structure in that scheme. And then the extent, of the, the, and the extent and the level of the garden and landscape were further explored. In this scheme, we are building still 11 feet off the property line. We have other options that build right onto the property line. And we're still studying a lot of that. Um, the next step is going to be addressed by Caroline. I just want to uh, reach a, touch on a couple of things also that we got from the parish. We are very much focused on sustainability, energy efficiency, and potential LEED accreditation, or LEED, LEED certification, I should say. <laughs> All right. I think that's it. Good morning. I'll be brave. I'll try to be brave and do this. Okay. Um, so I am um, this year's junior warden, and the vestry retreat this year followed hot on the heels of the parish meeting. It was the following weekend. Um, we went away to a state park in Kentucky, and on Friday night, every member of the vestry, all 15 of us, were handed these seven pages of collated responses from the small group discussions that we had at the parish meeting, as well as written responses from the survey that was sent out immediately after the parish meeting. Um, this wasn't a summary, this was verbatim, word for word notes that were taken in the small groups and word for word things that came through on the survey results. Um, our homework overnight was to read through it and, um, and try to digest it a little bit. And we spent a significant portion of Saturday's um, meeting digesting it, um, digesting all of this feedback collectively and, um, and thinking about what, what to do with it. Um, we distilled a few underlying um, themes. They were light and air was a, was a common theme throughout the responses. Um, Primary entries, the, the, you know, hospitality, the welcome um, of people arriving on campus, the estimated cost of, um, of the proposed plan and whether or not it was feasible, um, pedestrian traffic flow, I think kind of went with um, primary entries, sustainability was a common theme, um, Desirable space for children and youth, we named as a theme, um, and the receptionist location and parking. Um, those were all those were all common themes in the responses, and we heard them. And we um, at our vestry retreat passed a resolution charging the implementation committee to move forward um, with with these six themes in mind. So I'd love to, more? to stop briefly with the presentation, and especially on these last two, which was a, in, included a, a rehearsal of what was presented in January, along with a summary of how the parish responded. See, just to see, are there questions of clarification? Are there things remembered differently, or things that you'd add to the conversation? And I'm just going to put back up, basically, the footprint that was presented that day. Comments or questions about Bergen's presentation so far or uh, about Caroline's summary of the congregational response? Please. With the increase of the setback, which is obvious for the two plans, uh, what does that do to the space? Uh, does it reduce the space? And by how much? Bergen? If you could maybe... Yeah. Repeat the question in a microphone and come to a microphone just so it'll be there for the recording. So the question is, with the increase of the setback, which we can look at in the following scheme right there, what does it do to the, the plan? It's a good question. So we are just looking now at the point of figure grounds. We did in January have a specific plan. So we, we would basically pull the, the fellowship back more north, and potentially we would have to look at how we vertically integrate that stuff. 
So maybe some things that used to be on the main level would either go down or up. So we are not at that point. I think we have to, as a congregation, agree this is the, the, the direction. Because there's a lot of sensitivity about light, air, and visibility to the people. Yeah, go ahead. If you come to a microphone, would you, would you mind? Please. This scheme that you see here is one of three that were offered to address parish concerns. Uh, we chose one of them. In all of those, the size of the fellowship hall is reduced somewhat, but is still half again as big as this combined space. Um, so that's one, uh, that's one probable change. And as Bergen mentioned, what we're seeing is a footprint. We're not seeing how many levels tall it is. So uh, there, there are all sorts of options. But, uh, but in all likelihood, the size of the fellowship hall would be reduced from double what is this combined space now to one and a half times this combined space. That's probably uh, what's in the offer. I didn't name this specifically, and I probably should have. The, the eight series of designs came after the charge of the vestry to implementation to move forward with those six concerns in mind. That was work that they did specifically with addressing those concerns. One more factor to this. Again, we're only talking about footprints of the building. If we take the 11 feet all the way to the, uh, to the property line on the west side, that would also accommodate some of our program. And we're looking at that. Go ahead. Uh, will we keep the large magnolia uh, there in the, off the sidewalk? Re repeat the question, if you would, in the microphone. Will we keep the large magnolia, I guess, at the south east corner of the uh, southwest. southwest corner of the? Okay. And uh, I'll defer to to management. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, we have, I assume we will. So, yeah, can you clap? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Two applause, she said. There's, no, there's been no discussion eliminating that. Ken, and then back here. Ken, first, please, and then. Can I answer that question? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, that's good. Yes. So the question is, when we met in January, we talked about two schemes, a flat roof scheme or a peaked roof scheme. Flat roof, obviously that. Peaked roof meaning more like in the proportions of what the nave has. Um, since the January meeting, we're simply looking at figure ground configurations. A lot of these discussions will drive which way we, we go on that. Cost and volume and program. So that has not been determined. If, if we did a flat roof, we could potentially do a green roof. That was also one of the discussions. And then there's a debate about does a flat roof better coexist with the architecture of the nave or does a peaked roof kind of bow as a smaller sibling to the nave? So that, all that stuff will be explored as we get, go into the next phase. But these are good questions. Bernie, yes. If someone does build up to our property line, say a 10 story building on the west side, how effective does that space be? It still exists as a ventilation space and as a walkway? That's a, that's a good question. And that's why. Is, yeah. As I understand it, Tom, I mean, downtown code, you could, I mean, the Hyatt, which is going up just down from us across the west of the Holiday Inn Express is, I don't know, 25 stories. So you can, you can build. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is a city and, and it's the, just with the value of land, people are building higher and higher. But that, it's, a, it's a concern. Go ahead, Sean.
So the question is, has there been a discussion of developing parking lot A or B? B, B. B which is to the north, and us and creating a uh, underground garage or below level garage or even at grade and uh, building a spec office building with Christ Church occupying some of that space. Is that fair? There has not been that discussion, no. Go ahead. Early on in the life of the third party working group, however, uh, we were approached by the uh, Southwest Value Partners who own the Lifeway property about that property, parking lot B and the annex property. And we, I think, even set up one or two meetings with them. They canceled both of them, and that was the last we heard of it. Charlie, I'd also add <clears throat> that there have been a couple of in, uh, individual parishioners who have offered feedback similar to this to the Campus Concerns Committee, that this, this was an idea, in essence, that they had. And so it, it hasn't been contemplated with architectural assistance, but that idea has been floated by a couple of individuals to the Campus Concerns Committee. Some churches in larger cities have done that. Amen. Sure. Cathedral sure. in Philadelphia is an example. Yes, right here. As you look to modify the setback, either either closer or farther back, uh, is that affecting the vertical height of the new addition in terms so, of square footage? Or? Yeah. So the question is, as we look to modify the setback and going back to the scheme that was presented in January versus this one, does that impact the planning, the square footage, the vertical heights? Yeah, are you Absolutely. Extra that, that yeah, we, potentially we can, especially if we take up the 11 feet along the property line. So depending on where we land, I think there's a consensus that we need to pull some of that back. If you can imagine a 25 story building right there on the property line, yeah. we're gonna have to create some kind of oasis with lights and air there. Yes, right here. Uh, so the question is, so in this scheme, again, presented in January, the fellowship hall was about 4,000 feet. In this scheme, potentially it could be reduced to three. Uh, we can look at prioritizing, if we, go, if we go with this scheme, how do we still accommodate that program need? Again, another option is if we increase the width of the room 11 feet, that's going to help substantially. If we push a little bit further uh, we can't, I mean, we could push a little bit further north or locate some of the support space on other levels. We will have a full service elevator, freight slash passenger that can accommodate uh, mobility between floors. Sir, can you pull the microphone just a little bit closer, point it a little closer to, to your mouth? Okay, your mouth? this? Yeah, yeah sorry. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sorry. Am I overlooked? There's one other one right in here that I overlooked. Uh, yes, back here and then here. Please. Yeah, I, I was just looking at, I mean, your reasoning earlier, uh, just clarifying this, was the reason for the setback was because the visual aesthetics of going down or down Broadway, and so that you're not blocking the main cathedral, the existing cathedral, is that more of his that so, so, you know, know how that setback is coming forward, so that's blocking it visually, or is the old reasoning for the setback more budgetarily, or are you trying to reduce the square footage? No, it, it was... It, a lot of feedback about the setback. A lot of concern about the the sun exposure to the western faced uh, stained windows, stained glass windows, and green space. And green space. That the, this scheme was a lot more urban. Again, t ten to fifteen feet off the off the property line, versus this. Great again, more green space, patio area, what have you. The number of people it will accommodate. <laughs> yeah, and like, and, but let's be, it was, uh, it was uh, we wanted it to accommodate, uh, to be able to seat 300 people for dinner, say, or also accommodate um, theatrical performances, or 
um, uh, a room uh, a room set up like this for a large forum. It, or the it, alternative it was, Christmas market. Exactly, <clears throat> but but sort of a working number was 300 to 350 seated. Uh, and that will not, that is, will drive the, uh, there was another question about the fellowship hall size. So it's all, it's all relative and it's all malleable, but, and, and it's not yet determined, but we're not gonna wind up saying, oh well, if we can only accommodate 200, that's okay. Uh, I mean, no, because that was a chief uh, concern of pretty much everyone. This space right here. This space right here is right at 2,000 square feet. The full These length. two rooms yeah. together. So we're talking about at least three to four. So. Just curious on this addition where the uh, fellowship hall is a little smaller. How come that notch is taken out top there? The white, the white notch is in the north. I, it's a good question. It, it's it's a conceptual diagram. I think the idea was that. That would be kind of the landing point for the access. It would be kind of a hardscape area before you entered the building. So the, the uh, accessible parking spaces would be immediately adjacent to that. But that's clearly subject to change. Yeah. And, and that area would be the vertical lot. That'd be kind of the, the heart of it where you'd have the elevators, the exit stairs, entry points. Go ahead. Yeah, I would imagine that on any of these conditions, there's opportunity to have another expansion There, you could always do that, so, but obviously with the understanding you displace parking. So we're, so we're weighing all kinds of things, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yes, Charles. Is it fair to say that with the diversity of interests and the passion with which people carry those interests to this parish and their willingness of people in the parish to speak strongly about their interests, Should I repeat the question? Please. <laughs> Susie? <Yes. laughs> Bergen was asking for cute applause. <laughs> so Charlie Cook asked, <laughs> perhaps rhetorically, um, with the, the wide uh, diversity of interest and expressions, it would be, would it be, uh, let me articulate, it might be highly unlikely that we come up with a plan that accommodates everybody's concerns. Is that fair? But, but the, okay. the, the, the preacher might ought to respond here. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> with God, all things are possible. <laughs> I mean, I Amen. <laughs> yeah. All right. That referred to room in the inn. Oh, okay. That's that refers to the uh, overnight uh, room in the inn program. Um, also, I might say, by way of trying to accommodate everyone's desires, a few years ago, some of you may have been uh, at the church service at which the then newly retired Archbishop of Canterbury spoke, and he uttered a memorable phrase and he repeated it so I actually did remember it and that was that the church is made up of a marvelous concoction of saints and fatheads. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said he would leave it to us individually to decide which of those camps we fell into. <laughs> So the question is to get more clear well, clarity. To have more space and the light, which is, is beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Where is the youth going to go in that? Well, so the question is, where will the youth be located in this master plan? So after January, we got a lot of input about the specific plan itself. So we said, let's back up and at least agree on the figure ground, which is what this reference is. Let's agree on how we're going to mass and master plan the site. With the backup of what HBRA did, that we know that all those program elements can fit in any of these options, and then we can determine where the youth go. They could go, they could go in, uh, in the new building. They could go in within the existing building. There are two or three options. They could go on the third floor of this building. So, and then, then that, there's another element if we build to the property line and they're on, the, on that west side, how does that interact and, and feed the concerns of Allison and her team? But they will be here, they will not be in. Office. They will absolutely be on this. Any, any scheme that we're representing can accommodate the, all the program requirements that were established over a year ago, including uh, the youth. To, to, to be explicit there, Whatever plan evolves from this anticipates that renting of the space across 8th Avenue will be retired. That That's that right. would no longer be a feature of our, our programming. Yes. Has there been a prioritization put together on the phasing of that? Like who would, you know, would you start renovating the downstairs in order to first accommodate the youth while the construction is being, uh, or is happening next door? I, I think it's been, again, with Cindy Anderson and conceptually with the committee in the scheme that we represented in January, which was, I can't get it. Anyway, the, the prior scheme, the idea was that part of the advantage is, assuming we had the financial capabilities, we could build the new building on parking lot A and then continue to operate within this building. So is, then we, we would occupy that piece and then in, over in phases, then begin renovating this building. So part of the ISIS report, the facility assessment is, we, if we pull a building permit and significantly build on this, we're gonna have to up, update code in the existing facility. And a lot of this is updated, but we're gonna have to be more uh, comprehensive about it. I think I'm gonna ask Tyler to step up. I don't see where she is. I know she's right wonderful there. Tyler to step up and talk some about next steps for us and where to from here. Would you like the over the ear or the sure. ear? <clears throat> Thanks. Timothy? Timothy, is this your computer? Sorry. Is this yours? No. Oh. Is, is uh, Ellen present? Right. Yeah. I think it's. Is it frozen? Please. Maybe. Sorry. That's okay. There we go. Okay. So I'm struck um, today listening all the way back to the 90s and maybe before and looking at all of the people that have participated in this over decades now that um, we actually have next steps um, and we are looking very much forward to moving forward with a plan. So. Um, we have a strategic plan in place. We've started, uh, and we've had many ongoing conversations. We continue to have them today about what that strategic plan in action will mean. And the next step is really to, to, to bring that to fruition. So over the next couple of months, um, the Campus Concerns Committee will be issuing a request for proposal, an RFP for an architect of record uh, to, um, begin to really uh, establish what, what this plan will look like. Um, the, uh, the RFP will be a competitive bidding process to bid out this work for developing and directing the work of the ca campus master plan. Um, so far, what we've, what we've seen, what we've presented to you has been conceptual and just a draft for us to dream about. And so, with the work in hand going back so many years, as has been mentioned, and with the ongoing feedback that we continue to receive, we feel we're, we are in a good position to go ahead and make that selection um, and finally select the architecture firm that will create this plan for our, 
our campus. Um, we expect that the, the architect will be in place, we are hoping by the fall. Um, we expect that the architect would, would be visiting with us regularly, providing reports to us, hearing from us, getting to know us. Um, and there will be continued opportunities for sessions like this, for future forums, for continuing feedback from the parish. Um, turning all of these dreams for our youth and for fellowship and for outreach will require uh, a financial commitment from all of us. And so, of course, um, this will, uh, it, in the coming months, we will see a launch of a capital campaign. A lot of the work is already underway. Hal and Donna Johnson are chairing that effort. They put together a leadership team uh, to help them. Um, and over the summer in particular, they are beginning, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of the initial behind the scenes silent phase work of recruiting uh, major gifts, leadership gifts, um, uh, sizable gifts, hopefully. Um, but we expect that hopefully by the fall that, that the reach of the capital campaign will be, will be more parish-wide, more visible, more targeted, uh, or I should say targeted more broadly. Um, bringing this plan together will require us to come together in bold and new ways. And so it is, I know that Hal feels a real sense of eagerness I know that our committees feel a real sense of eagerness at this point to really put this into action. And so um, it is exciting to look forward and know what, is, what will be unfolding in the coming months to uh, bring these conversations that have been happening over so many years to a fruition. Questions about next steps, parishes' involvement with the committee. Yes, in the back. steps. Please. Do we have any, any kind of uh, imagined time frame or, you know, like when we might see what the law is in all of this? I mean, like when might we, be, might we be celebrating the opening of the new uh, building? <laughs> when might we celebrate the renovation of this, of this building and so forth? <laughs> So, so much of that, I believe, will depend on the parish's involvement and getting behind this initiative. I think we, we see the direction we're heading in. We're ready this spring, even summer, to bring on an architect of record who will fill in some of the details that we've talked about here. And also this summer, we'll be, we'll be talking with those who, who will really get us started on the capital campaign. I think in the, in the uh, big picture, we'd hope at the annual parish meeting, to have a formal, not just update, but an announcement of the campaign for all to jump in. And one, one could imagine that at that point, we are well on our way. A timeline with respect to construction, I think all of us would, would be hesitant to, to give that. Certainly not many yeah. years out. It's on the horizon, but the detail of which, given the downtown environment and given our commitment that's yet to be declared, uh, it remains to be seen. But hopefully on just, just over just at or at the horizon. Thank you all for being here. This presentation will be repeated again tomorrow evening. It will be available soon on, on, on uh, video for others to, to view and, and rehearse. Please continue to be in conversation with members of your committee. It would be easy to think this was not about proclaiming the good news of God in Christ, seeking and serving Christ in all persons. That was more about the detail or the money. It's about who we are becoming as a community and who we are in the declaration of Christ uh, in this community. I encourage you to keep that in the foremost of your mind and also, especially with respect to parish unity and moving together, prayer. 
please devote this matter to prayer in your personal prayer life, also praying for the individuals who've committed themselves to this work. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much.